Viltrax recently sent me their speed booster for the Canon C70 and Red Komodo, and I thought it would be a fun video to compare it to Canon's version of that same speed booster. So I went to lensrental.com and rented the Canon version with my own money. This video is not sponsored, but I thought it would be a fun comparison to do. Speed boosters are great for two reasons. Number one, if you've got a crop factor in your image, maybe you've got a full frame camera that crops in a little bit when you switch over to 4K. In my case, I've got a Super 35 sensor, which is kind of close to an APS-C size sensor, and it allows me to get a full frame equivalent. And the second reason it's great is because it kind of acts like a magnifying glass. It actually takes some glass and when the light shines through it, it makes the image smaller. So it actually magnifies the light and allows you to get about a stop more light onto your sensor. And anytime you introduce glass between your lens and your sensor, you can wind up with some problems with sharpness, with color cast, and with light emission. So we're gonna do some tests to compare those things. And we're straight in with the sharpness test. This is the Canon Mount Adapter EF EOS r 0.71 times speed booster and this is the Viltrux EFR3 0.71 times speed booster. The lens that I'm using is the Canon 50mm f1.4 and I'm using the same settings for both the Viltrux and the Canon speed boosters. You can see that they're pretty similar when the image is at 100% but we're going to zoom into 300% and look at the top right corner and you can see a little bit more fuzziness starting to happen. A lot of that's digital, but when we switch over to the Canon mount again, you can see that the Canon kind of just edges this one out. In fact, if we look in the center, you can see that it's even closer, but up in the edges, the Canon is a little bit sharper, giving it the edge in the sharpness test. Now let's switch over and compare color cast. So as far as the light goes in this setup, there's definitely some vignetting happening. There's a hot spot right there but this is not a test for how clean the vignette actually looks here. This is more of a comparison. So I think this setup still works. This time we'll start with the Viltrox speed booster because I've already done a full breakdown of the color cast in this speed booster and I did a full review of it as well. I'll link that video in the description and I'll link it up here in the top right if you want to go watch that video about the Viltrox EFR3. But if we switch over to the Canon speed booster then you can see that the Canon speed booster actually does have a slight magenta shift giving the Viltrox the edge in the color cast test. And when we talk about color, we also have to talk about vignetting. So what I did here is just increase the contrast as much as I could, bringing down the blacks and shadows all the way and bringing up the contrast highlights and whites all the way. To my surprise, the Canon mount is actually a little bit darker by about 0.2 stops. So we'll adjust for that and we'll switch back to the Viltrux EF-R3. And it looks like the vignette is about even, which to me gives the advantage for light transmission to the Viltrux speed booster. For this next section, I needed to find a place that had a low light subject with a high key backlight. So I thought that my fireplace right here was the perfect choice because of the low light that I could have on the fire itself and then the high intensity light that's coming through the doors here and here. And of course, I'm not gonna leave the fireplace as dark as it was. Let's expose properly. And if you notice the door to the right is a little bit brighter, so we'll look in this area. And if you examine closely, you can see a little bit of that light leaking in from the Canon speed booster. But if we switch over to the Viltrox speed booster, you notice it a lot more. So the Canon speed booster is the clear winner when it comes to light leak. The Viltrox EF-R3 comes in right around $270, and I'm gonna leave a link in the description. The Canon speed booster comes in at $599. It's not gonna cost you anything more to purchase from my affiliate links, but I do get a little bit of kickback, so it helps this channel out a lot when you do use affiliate links. But what do you guys think? Is it worth paying the extra $300 plus for the Canon one? They both have their pluses and minuses. I mean, using the Viltrox one is a little bit easier to get on the camera and take it off when you don't need it. The Canon Speed Booster, you put on the camera and it actually screws in and you can use it that way or you can choose to not use it that way and use it more like the Viltrox Speed Booster, but then you don't get the added benefit of the stability that the Canon Speed Booster offers. They both do have some light leak that's happening in there. The Viltrox seems to have it a little bit worse than the Canon one does, but they both have it. The Canon seems to have a little bit more color shift towards magenta than the Viltrox, but they both also fail in lens stability. So if you're using a large cinema lens with a focus puller, then you might actually get your 
image to tilt a little bit when you start on the focus. And that's not due to the speed booster's attachment to the camera itself, it's the attachment of the lens to the speed booster. So if you're wanting to kind of resolve that issue, you're either gonna need to come up with a solution yourself to tighten down that big glass to the speed booster, or you're gonna need to go with something like the Viltrox EF-RX Pro, which offers everything that the EF-R3 offers, but it's got this knob that actually secures the lens in place so that it doesn't have that torsion effect when you're using cinema glass. If you liked this video, give it a like. If you got some information out of it, if I helped you make your purchasing decision, let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.